Hello and welcome to another tutorial by Harla Penguin. Today, we are playing with fluid simulations in Blender to make a calm water simulation. If you find this tutorial helpful, please send a like our way. Fluid simulations in Blender initially seem overwhelming. However, once you understand the basic components, the simulations are easy as long as you have the patience for baking the simulation. Often it takes a few attempts to get the simulation to look right. If you get frustrated, just take a break and watch a calm flowing water fountain video. Let's get started. We will start with the default Blender scene. We are going to scale the cube up to make a larger base in the X and Y directions. Then we will scale it down in the Z direction. Next, we will extrude to create the box shape. Press tab to change into edit mode, switch to the side view and select the top four vertices. Now switch to the top view. Next, press E to extrude and then S to scale the extrude along the top plane of the model. Switch to side view. For this next part, I like to use wireframe mode. To switch to wireframe, press Z and 4. Press E to extrude and Z to constrain to the Z direction. Now you should have the basic shape of the box. Now, that we have the model, we will add the shader. In this case, the shader is very basic. Switch to shading and delete the principled BSDF shader. Press Shift A and select Shader, Glass BSDF to add a glass shader. Connect the output of the glass shader to surface on the material output. You can get fancy with the glass, but I kept the basic settings. Before we test render, there are two more steps to make the render look good. First, we need to switch the render engine to cycles. I cannot get glass to look good in EV. Second, we need to add HDRI lighting. My favorite site for HDRIs is Polyhaven. I will drop a link in the description. Polyhaven's collection of HDRIs is amazing. Definitely worth supporting. In the shading tab, switch from object to world and add an environment texture. Since I want just a black background and not the HDRI in the background, I add a light path node and a mix shader node. In the light path node, connect the camera ray node to the mix shader node factor. Connect two background shaders to the input shaders of the mix shader node. And connect the environment texture to one of the background nodes. Set the other background node to black. I frequently forget to add my texture file in the environment texture node. If when you render, you see a lot of pink in the render, it probably means you have a missing texture file. Go ahead and do a test render to make sure that everything looks okay. Once you are satisfied with the box, duplicate twice. We are going to scale the boxes so they are slightly overlapping with the bottom cube being the longest. In my case, I spent some time adjusting the location of each box. You probably don't need to spend too much time, because we will adjust the boxes more once we get the simulation running. We will want to ensure the water is flowing in the right way. So you don't have to watch me adjust, I will speed through this part. Once we have the boxes arranged, we will now cut the opening in each box. We are going to make a loop cut in the middle of the box. You will want to be in wireframe mode for this. Press Ctrl R, and you should see a yellow loop appear that shows where the loop cut will occur. Click once to select the direction and then you can adjust the location left and right. We want the cut to be slightly left of center. Click again to make the cut. Keep in mind, we can always adjust this cut by selecting the cut vertices and using the grab tool to move. Next, we will switch back to solid view pressing Z and 6. We are going to delete faces. Switch to face select. Select the first face and press X and delete face. Do the same with the other faces to create the opening. 
Now we will add new faces. Select four connected vertices and press F to create a face. Do the same with the remaining vertices. However, make sure to deselect all vertices before you select another group of four. Otherwise, you will end up with some weird faces. Now do the same with the remaining boxes. We probably could have done this before we duplicated. I find it easier to hide the other boxes while I work. Now we will apply the scale. Press Ctrl A and select either scale or all transforms. Some modifiers work on models before the transforms like scaling. Therefore, it is important to apply the transforms before using modifiers. We will do this for all three boxes. Next, we will make the base structure. I wanted to make something that looks rocky. Add a cube to the scene. Scale in the X and Y directions to make it slightly larger than the bottom box. Now scale in the Z to flatten. In my case, I made this a little long in the X direction. I am going to grab the edge vertices and move them into the edge of the bottom box. Now with the left vertices selected, press E to extrude. We are making the larger part of the structure. Select the four vertices for the top of the larger structure and extrude upward. Next, we will select the top four and middle four vertices of this new structure. We are going to subdivide. Click on Edge, Subdivide. In the lower left, I am going to change the number of subdivisions to three. Switch back to Solid View. Turn on Proportional Editing and select Random as the type. Proportional Editing allows you to move a vertex and cause a proportional change in the vertices within a certain radius. The Random type will move the vertices random amounts. As the icon shows, you can use this to make mountain shapes. This works for us, because we want the base to look rocky. You can change the area of effect for the proportional editing by scrolling the mouse wheel. Once you are happy with the rough placement, you can switch proportional editing to another option, such as smooth or sphere, to fine-tune placement. Now we will add the texture. In the shader tab, click on the new button to create a new material. We will name the new material, base. We will name the glass material as well. Keep the principled BSDF and add an RGB node. Press Shift A, and select input, RGB. We will select a light tan color. Next, we will add a noise texture. Press Shift, A, 
and select texture and then noise texture. Finally, we will add a mix color node. Shift A, color, mix color. We connect the RGB node into the B input of the mix color node. Connect the factor output of the noise texture into the factor input of the mix color node and to the metallic node of the principal BSDF. Connect the mix color node into the base color of the principal BSDF. In the mix color node, change the A input to a dark brown. I could have just selected both colors in the mix color node. However, when I initially created, I wasn't sure if I would want to use the tan color for other purposes. Now, we want to adjust the noise settings. I significantly increased the scale to 49 or 50. This made the dark spots of the material much smaller. I also increased the roughness to around 0.69. Now, let's do a quick test render. Now we move on to the fluid simulation. We start by changing the base and the boxes to effectors. For each object, click the physics tab in the property viewer on the right and select fluid, and then effector. Now, we are going to add four objects, the domain, inflow, two outflow objects. First, we are going to add the liquid inflow. Add a cube and scale it down. Place it in the top box. Initially, I wanted this cube outside of the camera frame. However, the inflowing water splashed everywhere, so I decided to make it more like a fountain. I set the material of this cube to the same as the rocky base. Set this cube to inflow by selecting physics, fluid, flow. Change flow type to liquid and flow behavior to inflow. Once we have the inflow, we need to add an outflow. Otherwise, the water would overflow the bottom container. We will add another cube. Move this cube to the bottom box. Scale the width and height to match the bottom box. The length will be approximately 10% of the bottom box. We will turn this to an outflow. Select Physics, Fluid, Flow from the Properties panel. Change the flow type to liquid and the flow behavior to outflow. Next, we will set the material. Go to the shading tab and create a new material. Delete the principal BSDF node. Add a glass shader. Shift A, Shader, Glass BSD. Connect the BSDF output to the surface input of the material node. To give it a frosted look, increase the roughness to 0.9. Now, we will add an outflow at the very bottom to capture drops of water that splash out. We don't want any stray water rolling around the bottom of the fluid domain. Add a cube and scale to the size of the bottom of the model. Scale the cube in the Z direction to flatten.
We don't want this outflow to be seen, so we will add a transparent material. Switch to the shader tab and add a new material. Delete the principled BSDF and add a transparent shader. Shift A, Shader, Transparent BSDF. Finally, we will add our domain. Add a cube. Scale it up to cover all of our models. From the property panel, select Physics, Fluid, Domain. This cube will be our domain. The domain determines the volume in which the simulation calculations will occur. Anything outside of the domain box will not affect the simulation. There are a few settings that we need to select. Change the domain type to liquid and the resolution to 64. Scroll down and click the mesh checkbox. Scroll down more, and in cache, change the type to all and click as resumable. This will allow us to pause the baking early and ensure that the results are as expected before we bake the whole simulation. To give the mesh the watery look, we will use a glass shader. Go to the Shading tab and from the drop-down, select the glass shader we used for the water level boxes. Now we bake. Select the fluid domain and in the physics properties scroll down to the cache and click bake. Settle in because we will need to do this a few times. Depending on the speed of your computer, it may bake quickly or slowly. At any time, you can press escape and take a look at the current bake. Since we selected the resumable option, if everything looks okay, we can press bake again to continue the bake. You will likely need a few baking attempts to get everything looking good. You may have to adjust the length of the boxes, depending on where the water falls. I started with 250 frames of simulation. Once I was happy with the simulation, I increased the number of frames to 2800 to make the simulation 2 minutes. How long you make the simulation depends on your patience and the amount of hard drive space. Let me know in the comments if you have ideas for other simulations you would like to see. Thanks for watching.